Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm playing black against uh, Grandmaster Lunatics. I don't remember uh, who he is exactly, but I've played him before. Petr Mikalik, yeah, I played against him in the channel. So, yeah. Let's play the bishop before line once again. He's quite a tough opponent and uh, he seems to have a higher rating than the last time we met. Um, once again, knight f3, just like uh, Oparin two, two games ago. Yeah, now once again, I'll try this nice idea. Bishop back to c8. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, my uh, internet disconnected. And I'm not streaming, so the recording is still working. And uh, yeah, this is a bit shameful. <laughs> Regrettable, I would say. But uh, what can I do? So I'll just seek for a new game. I will not finish the video here. My rating dropped, I assume. Let's have a quick look. What happened to it? So... When it dropped by 10 points. Not too much. We're still in the quest uh, to cross 2500 before moving on to a different time control. Maybe back to 3 plus 0. But... Um, yeah, we have to wait for a new 5 minute game and we get someone else. Okay, International Master, the Independent. Okay. International Masters, Ano Anonymous from Egypt. Okay, nice. Cool. So, we have Queen's Gambit declined on the board. E4 is my main move here. There are many different uh, tricks here. Check. Yeah, now bishop d2 is obviously the principal line, but I like knight back to c3. Trying to play like Carlsen and, and moving to a, to a relatively um, more solid grounds, I would say. Much less crazy. Yeah, now let's say knight f3. I think this is the right move. And yeah, knight c6 is not the main move. Usually knight f6 is what they play. I'm not sure why though. I'm assuming d5 should be good for me. Yeah, bishop e3 doesn't make sense. Okay, let's go d5. I'll take with the pawn. And the main question here if he plays knight to e7, whether or not to go d6. This is usually the, the principled uh, question I have to answer. Because if I play d6, it can be a very annoying pawn for him. But it can also be quite a big weakness. I don't see any other choice though, so I'll just go for it. Other move seems less logical. Um, yeah, okay. Knight f5 is what I would expect. And now I have to find a good follow up. Bishop f4 seems like the logical. Um, way to proceed to protect my pawn if it goes knight f5 bishop to f4 but uh, I'm not too sure what to do next yeah okay I want to climb back after this shameful uh, disconnection against uh, lunatics At least he was a higher rated opponent. If he were 2000 on this site, I would have lost uh, maybe 30 points. So, okay, h4 now makes sense. Trying to exploit the position of this knight. h5 is logical. And now I would like to maximize uh, the pressure. He wants knight f6. I have to try to annoy him somehow. So. Yeah, I'm not sure how, but maybe a good start will be to develop something. But where? And what? I think bishop g5 followed by bishop d3, but this pawn will be weak. Okay, let's concentrate for a moment here. It's 
not so easy. Bishop e3, b6. Seems like a tempo that might be useful. Um, okay, let's try it. I don't see what else to do. Yeah. Now knight g5, queen f3 comes to mind. Also bishop d3 followed by bishop e4. This endgame looks like it would be better for me, although I'm not sure. Bishop d3, queen takes d6. Okay, knight g5, knight f6. I don't see a follow up. Queen f3, rook b8. Just go for the end game. Assuming he takes on d6. If he doesn't, it should be quite convincing. Excuse me. Okay. So, yeah. He's going for it. So bishop e4 would also make some sense. And after rook b8 I have check on c6. But once again, no follow up. Bishop takes d6, queen d1, rook d1, g. Okay, I, I like this idea. So let's go for it. And then knight e5, threatening to take on g6. You should go knight e7 probably. And then I will go bishop g5. And I think I can at least retrieve some of the material and I maintain my uh, development uh, advantage, my lead in development. So, yeah, he chooses probably rightfully. To give back the material, I will take it, gladly take it, and yeah, trying to improve my pieces, f3, limiting his pieces, both his knight and bishop, knight f4 is probably my follow-up, if, yeah, now let's develop the king, I mean move it closer to the center. I feel like I should be slightly better, but it can be very close to a draw uh, when the, it's, there are opposite Check. colored bishops. Okay, so I have to find the right plan to at least put some pressure on him. Maybe I'll go here. Attacking this guy. I have to be careful not to get into time pressure, because opposite colored bishops and uh, when you have an endgame which is equal, it's very common in Blitz when someone tries to flag uh, someone else. So I have to be careful of that. Knight takes h5 would make sense at some point, not necessarily now. Um, he wants to grab the pawn, I can't really protect it. Uh -huh. I'll use this sophisticated move. <laughs> Going back to e5 after all. Yeah, with the clock situation, I don't see how to proceed. But my knight definitely belongs in e5. <laughs> this is a funny maneuver. If he goes bishop b7, maybe I'll go rook hg1 this time. So I expect king e7. And then I'm not sure what I will do. Rook hg1 looks kind of logical. But it allows uh, bishop takes e4, and after knight e5, he has rook takes d1. And I'm not too happy about it. Although, nah, okay, it's not so good. So I'll just go knight e5 immediately, and after bishop b7, I think it will be the same position for the third time or so. 
Why is it taking so long? <laughs> this is not such a complicated uh, situation. You can go king e7 simply. Wow. Um, I'm assuming. I'm assuming there's something going with the internet, but it's not mine. If it's my internet, they us normally disconnect uh, instantly. So either he has an internet problem or he's very distracted because this is not how you handle such a situation. All right. But he's trying to prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll put the rook here. Oh, I, I let him uh, take over the open file. This is not very good for me. Check. And grab my pawn like this. Okay. Go here. Check. I think I'm losing some material. Time warning. Check. Oh my goodness. Check. Yeah, but he blundered. Check. And it seems like I'm. Black results. Yeah, I managed to win despite uh, messing it up somewhat. I guess his solution to this problem wasn't so bad. Let's have a quick look at the game. Check. Okay, so until here, I'm sure it's more or less theoretical. Knight c6 is a relatively rare move, I think. Knight f6 is much more common. And uh, although this position is not uh, very common in itself. Um, okay, let's put the computer because I'm not sure what, how it goes. Yeah, d5 is definitely the principal move. But uh, I wasn't sure if I was right in choosing it. Okay, now d6 is the big question. Whether or not I should I should try to, to stick this pawn in, down his throat. Okay, it's not not entirely clear if it was the best move or not. H4 makes a lot of sense, and now knight g5 is the follow-up. I wasn't sure what to do after knight f6, and now the computer changed his mind too. Okay, so far so good. I'm playing very nicely. Yeah, bishop d3. Yeah, now bishop e4 was the point, but... Oh, wow, this is deep. This is deep. Just like to enter the same position as in the game, but only here the rook is on b8, so after knight e5 I have knight c6 related ideas uh, while attacking the rook. Yeah, I should have seen it, but I didn't. So for example, if the rook now was on b8, I would have had knight c6 with the double attack on the rook and rook d8 check and winning this rook. So yeah, I'm still slightly better, but it's very difficult to exploit um, with the time control I have. Yeah, okay, it feels like uh, my position was... Uh, should, I should be able to improve it. Yeah, this is a very deep move. Rook a1, not exchanging the pieces and preparing some a4, a5. Yeah, and my pieces are so strong and... And, uh, yeah, it's just dominating. And the knight is definitely... Definitely belongs to e5. I, it took me a while to realize it. Um, and I put it on f4 in, in between. Just because I felt like I should improve the position with the... Uh, by, by threatening some pawns rather than improving my pieces or avoiding exchange which is a very typical uh, theme when you have more uh, active pieces and more space um, so yeah here knight d3 yeah rook d3 was the best move apparently but I'm curious I, have, I want to check what happens if he had played this move um, King e7. Why was he so reluctant to play it? Uh huh. Knight e5 is what I was thinking, but then after bishop b7 we we have the same position, and then maybe I have the same idea of rook a1 or a4. So objectively he was right, but but I wouldn't understand why someone would be afraid to transpose to a position from the game. Okay. Good call by my opponent, and rook d6 was definitely the best move. 
in case he blockades with knight d5, I would still have rook d7 check. Yeah, that's a pity on my part. I had 30 seconds more, I could afford to think for a few seconds. I just wanted to rush. I was so excited because he had no time. It's not an excuse, but yeah, I'm sometimes I'm uh, falling for for such uh, beginner's uh, mistakes. Yeah, there is a nice story or saying that uh, I, I think I read it in uh, John Nunn's book once. I think the book was called something like Secrets of Practical Game, uh, Practical Chess Strategy or something like this. Um, he said um, that a person who gets into time pressure or plays fast because of uh, time pressure uh, reasons and then blames it uh, as the reason uh, why he didn't win or why he played bad moves is equivalent to a person who has a DUI yeah, drunk under in driving under influence yeah driving the car while being drunk and uh, has an accident and then blames it on being drunk so it's my responsibility to find the best moves under any circumstance and if I have time pressure it's my fault and uh, yeah here I made some mistakes I allowed my opponent uh, <coughs> to get take over the initiative but fortunately for me when they have 8 seconds and I have 18 um, this kind of uh, small advantage matters a bit less so and he also fell for a tactic immediately now it's completely lost so yeah I can say I'm too disappointed but from from the moves I made and the result of the game but from my own uh, discipline point of view I have to say I shouldn't let my opponent's time pressure affect my objectivity so for this uh, this is this lesson I would take with me and uh, yeah I hope you learned something from this video and from this game and uh, if you want to learn some more then keep watching the next video